In our interview, Vladimir Putin continued to deny that the Russian government interfered in the U.S. election. Richard Haas is the president of the Council on Foreign Relations and author of A World in Disarray. Do you believe his denials on the election interference? I don't speak Russian, but there's no word in Russian these days for freelancing. The idea that anybody in Russia would have done such things as interfere in the American elections without Vladimir Putin's personal OK is inconceivable. Not according to Mr. Putin. In our interview, he told us there was no way Russians could have swayed the election to President Trump. Could anyone really believe that Russia, thousands of miles away, with the help of two or three Russians, like you said, whom I don't even know, that they interfered and influenced the outcome of the election? Doesn't, doesn't that sound ridiculous even to you? Not at all ridiculous when you learn this. Mr. Putin does know at least one of the Russians named in the indictment. According to Mueller, this man, Yevgeny Prigozhin, helped bankroll the cyber operation used to interfere in the 2016 election. Prigozhin is a powerful Russian oligarch whose close association with the Russian president has earned him a nickname, Putin's cook. It's not true that you don't know the individuals who are accused of conducting this. Uh, one of your good friends is actually accused of helping conduct this. His name is Yevgeny Prigozhin. You know him? I know that person, but I wouldn't consider him one of my friends. This is just twisting the facts around. He is a businessman. He is involved in the restaurant business and some other business. But he is not a government official. We don't have anything to do with him. After you heard that he had been indicted, did you pick up the phone and call him? Like I have nothing better to do. I've got so many things to do and so many problems. He's your friend. He's just been indicted. Did, didn't you hear what I said? He's not a friend of mine. I do know this person, but I wouldn't list him among my friends. Wasn't I clear? And there is a great number of individuals like that. In Russia there are 146 million people, not as many as in the US, but still a pretty large number. He's pretty you, you said that he's well known, so what? There are plenty of well known people in Russia. He's not a public official, he's not a government employee, he's just a private individual, a businessman. Some people say his real job is to do your dirty work. Who are these people? And what dirty work? I don't engage in any dirty work. Everything I do is out in the open. This is like a stereotype for you. You have someone who likes doing dirty work and you think that we do the same. No, that's not the case. It's A, the fact that <coughs> you know him, you admit that, he's a prominent Russian businessman and he's specifically accused of running this operation. B, this is the same man who's been accused of sending Russian mercenaries into Syria and they attacked a compound held by American-backed militia. This guy gets around. You know, this individual may have very diverse interests, including, for example, interests in the area of the fuel and the energy industry in Syria. However, we do not support him in any way, we do not interfere with him in any way, and we do not assist him. It's his own personal initiative. Yevgeny Prigozhin says he has no connection to the Russian mercenaries in Syria and denies involvement in any election interference. For his part, Mr. Putin insists his country has no desire to intervene in American politics. It's not our goal to interfere. We do not see what goal we would accomplish by interfering. There's no goal. So let's say we put an... Let's imagine we set ourselves the goal of interfering. For what? For the sake of interfering? What is the goal? So Creating I'm... chaos. That's the goal. That's certainly the belief of the U.S. intelligence community. I think his motivations were many. Uh, he really does try to shape the internal politics of other countries. John Brennan is a former CIA director and now an NBC News analyst. One of the real purposes of the Russian interference in the election was to undermine the integrity of that democratic process here in the United States, to create some confusion, to weaken the United States government, uh, and then the U.S. government is not going to be able to deal with international issues and, and confronting, I think, Russian aggression as uh, assertively as it needs to. In any case, Mr. Putin told us he cannot do anything about the activities of private Russian citizens. You can't? The Russian intelligence services cannot find out who's doing this, bring it to your attention, you're unable to stop it? 
Well, maybe if we started doing it in a purposeful way, we probably could have identified these individuals if they do exist. But we don't have that objective or that goal. So you have no goal to stop it. And so what does that mean for our elections in 2018 and 2020? We can expect more of the same? I didn't say that we don't have the goal of putting an end to it. I said that we have... You just said that. No. No, I did not say that. What I said is that we do not interfere in the private lives of our people. And we can't prevent them from expressing their points of view, including on the Internet. He maintained his hands were tied by Russian law. Internally, you could put a stop to this, if you had the desire. Yeah, yeah. I... Listen to what I'm saying. I want you to hear what I'm saying. We will stand in the way of anything that violates existing Russian laws. If they do not violate Russian laws, then there would be nothing to bring them to justice for. Would this violate Russian law? I have to see first what they've done. Give us the materials. Nobody's, you know what it is. nobody's given us anything. Hacking into the Democratic National Committee, hacking into John Podesta's email, creating interference <coughs> in our election by creating bots that spread false information on Twitter, on Facebook, spreading misinformation when it comes to Black Lives Matter, when it comes to the shooting we just had in Parkland, Florida, when it comes to our presidential election, spreading fake news in order to alter the course of a presidential race. That's what you I'm know, talking about. With all due. With all due respect, I want you to understand once and for all. After all, you do have people with legal degrees there, don't you? You probably do. I am 100% sure that there are, and there are people who are well-educated, who must understand and know that we in Russia cannot prosecute anyone as long as they have not violated Russian law. Moreover, we cannot open an investigation if there is no cause for that. Our conversation today cannot be the cause for that. Intelligence agencies in the United States, now a special prosecutor with a criminal indictment. That's not enough for you to look into it? Absolutely not. And if you do not have a legal degree, I can tell you, for that you need a request. Through the, I do. Through, well, in that case, you must understand that what it takes is an official request to the Prosecutor General's Office of the Russian Federation. And even then, we don't have an agreement with you whereby we could act, but at least send us a piece of paper. Vladimir Putin could not order an investigation into whether this was done in a way that undermines its relations with a major partner, the United States of America? Give us a document. Give us an official request. And we'll take a you look at it. You said that the last time, and now I'm back with an indictment. And now, the same this year. And now, there is no document. Again, I asked Richard Haas for his assessment. And all that stuff about, I'm going to take a look to see whether it violates Russian law. What Putin is giving you is the appearance of legality, of a due process. But this is all a smokescreen. None of this could or would have happened without the direct authority of the man who sits in the Kremlin. Coming up. He might be bad, he might be good, but he's a strong leader. President Trump seems to have a soft spot for President Putin. Never a harsh word for you. Why do you think he's so nice to you? Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.